pushing ourselves, and, and Steve, he was, he was a, good, a good sport given that he had uh, nine bouts of nausea on the way up, and, but he, if everything cleared once. It's hard to top. train for altitude sickness. It is, it is. Mm. Now, the traits of the gorilla. I know they groom each other all the time. Or is, is that just the mother grooming the baby? The baby rides with the mother for a long time. That's right, and they, uh, they do groom a lot, uh, and they're, um, they rely heavily on body language for communication, and it's very pronounced and exaggerated, but it's, it's actually, a lot of it is, you can understand when you see it. And I mean, it's, it's sort of the, the uh, crossing of the arms and turning mm. their back towards you and uh, acting in either a dominant or submission or a curious way. It's, it's obvious by the way mm -hmm. they act. And uh, we, we saw a brief, uh, you know, that one hour with them and uh, got to see a whole range of ages. Sure. But you're a biologist, not mm -hmm. a zoologist. So I'm not That's sure right. you're familiar with chimp behavior. And when a chimp does a certain, not a chimp, a gorilla does a certain thing, it well, means back up. That's right. Well, there's, a, there are, a, I guess, two gorilla words that I learned in the process. One was a, <clears throat> which a little sort of a clearing of your throat, mm -hmm. which was, would be a, excuse me, do you mind? And if you get a uh, uh, in, in return, that's a no problem, buddy, uh, carry on. Uh, and then a, uh, 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 would be a back off, uh, I, I mean business, uh, and give me space. So those are sort of the two, two vocalizations we did hear in the field uh, that we were told about in up front. But mm -hmm. there, are, there, are, there are other, uh, uh, other vocalizations that we, we didn't ex have a chance to, to oh. hear. Do you think they enjoyed the fact you were there? Were you were some they, of them definitely were they did. curious about you? Absolutely. The the young ones in particular, uh, we were supposed to keep a twenty foot minimum distance, uh, most notably because we didn't want to communicate uh, human born diseases. Uh, but uh, the the young ones approached us, and if they did, we would attempt to move back. But it was thick bamboo jungle, and mm. you did what you could. And uh, and our guides would try to encourage the uh, the uh, the young ones to return. Right. Any comforts of home? I mean, you say, you say you're like camping in the cold. Uh, well, the food good. Uh, you know how you always have on these expeditions a memorable moment or two. You think, gee, wasn't that a good night when we had a little tot of scotch? <laughs> it would. Uh, we had uh, we had a bottle of wine with us on the mountainside. But that didn't last very long. We we went prepared really for one camping night, and we took three. We had to make adjustments to our plans, mm -hmm. and it was uh, th we had to stretch our provisions to three full nights after a night in Goma, which was the the town we entered right. into. Uh, so it was sardines, peanut butter, and crackers, pretty much, and uh, and a dwindling supply of water that kept us going. But we weren't focused on food. We were exhausted by the end of the day, but we were very goal-driven. We wanted to find Akeley's grave. We wanted to find the site we did. Steve did his painting. After that, it was a huge sigh of relief. Mm. We, had, uh, we had accomplished what we had set out to do, and we had got, we've come back with some, uh, some uh, great imagery to tell that story. Okay, and now what happens with the great imagery? Well, our, our we're, next steps, we're working towards producing a documentary uh, about mm -hmm. this expedition and uh, all the parties involved, whether the, tell the uh, Mountain Gorilla Veterinarian Project and the heroic work they're doing, uh, the, uh, pl the general plight of the Mountain Gorilla, and the role that art has played and uh, in, in this case, but it, generally uh, in supporting conservation and the Carl Akeley story, how this is an artist 100 years ago who saw the writing on the wall, mm -hmm. saw that gorillas you know, were threatened uh, nearly a hundred years ago, and so he uh, he uh, committed himself to uh, ensuring their protection. Sure, and they're threatened today still, as you they're know, because of war, habitat loss. Can we blame anything on global warming? Don't know. Uh, poaching, disease. Well, what this painting that we did on the mountainside was the purpose of this. Why are we going to this location? It was to juxtapose the current state. Look at what is what did this this mm -hmm. diorama look like today, and how it had changed. And we saw refugee camps, we saw human encroachment, we saw deforestation and areas where uh, charcoal is being made, and and um, effects of war, the effects of a volcano eruption, and how this whole entire valley has been really cleared out. And the only remaining places, really, of the jungle and the habitat for the gorilla are at these high elevations in the national park. So it's a success story in the sense that 
Carl Akeley had the vision 100 years ago to create this park for the purpose of saving the gorilla, which it has done, and it remarkably, because there's no way that they would have survived had this park not been created. Well, as you know, when uh, humans are endangered, uh, they don't worry so much about the wildlife. That's These right. medics sound really interesting. They're specifically medics to gorillas. That's right. And they are, they are concerned about uh, human-borne illnesses, mm. so human contact. So the human-wildlife uh, contact as opposed to conflict. So ecotourism is actually a potential threat. So it's coming up with uh, ways to mitigate uh, sickness uh, in gorilla populations that right. could decimate it, uh, but as well it's the snares, the poaching mm -hmm. that goes on that is uh, really damaging or killing these gorillas or maiming them, they'll go in and on the site, it's like triage mm -hmm. in war, they'll, they'll treat them on the spot and release them. And they're poaching gorillas not necessarily for meat for what? Well, the poaching is actually a general bushmeat poaching. It's, it's set, oh, it lo is. looking for meat and it's not really in most cases it's not a case of trying to eradicate the gorillas it's locals where you know this is the remaining forest people are under tremendous pressure to survive okay and uh, they're looking for food and so it's uh, not for bile or liver bile or paws in or this in this case it's 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 more fundamental mm. than that and it speaks to the sort of the this, the desperation of the situation in these areas and why these areas really need our help at a humanitarian level if we ultimately want to uh, to see the mm -hmm. ongoing survival of the wildlife in these areas. I know you're a sculptor. Yes. So I'm thinking when you got home you wanted to make a gorilla. I do, absolutely. It's <laughs> certainly it's uh, on the top of my list. I, I uh, don't do my art full time. The, the Artists for Conservation is a, occupies a lot of my day-to-day mm -hmm. uh, -day efforts in running that organization, but I do enough, try to do enough to s still speak with a straight face that I am indeed a still an artist. And I pr produce a couple of pieces Well, I think when you were about 16, didn't Prince Philip get one of your pieces? He did. That was seems like ancient history now, but uh, the Prime Minister uh, at the time, Brian Mulroney, Today in Studio 4, before Santa shimmies down the chimney, marvelous award-winning mixologist David Walla-Woodnick shakes up some Christmas cocktails using some of his new zesty moves. And food guru Jamie Ma, who is an expert on what we eat, how we eat it, and where we should eat, comes in to help us dine out with passion and precision during the holidays. And to begin the hour, we meet an artist, biologist, geologist who combines his passion for the environment, social activism, and art using gorillas as his muse. Stay with us to meet Jeff Whiting, president and founder of Artists for Conservation.